we're going to use the Thassus Oracle because we've just drawn our whole deck. GG! Hello YouTube, welcome to Finding. Today we are going to have a look at Toulouse Clever Conductor in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by cycling through the whole deck and finishing off the opponent with a Thassus Oracle. So, uh, Toulouse Clever Conductor. Uh, 3 mana, 3-1. Three, and when it enters the battlefield, or, um, then it connives. Uh, so that means you draw a card, then discard a card, and if you discard a non-land card, uh, Toulouse gets a plus one plus one counter. And then the important part is whenever you discard one or more cards, exile them from the graveyard, and when Toulouse dies, you put all the cards exiled uh, into the, um, the hand again. So that means we have a bunch of cycling cards, um, just for the sake of cycling, like we're never going to actually cast a compelling argument. We're, it's just here to be cycled for one blue mana, and then it gets exiled with Toulouse, and when Toulouse dies, we get back the compelling argument. So that allows us to get more and more and more value. So total hand size does actually matter in this deck. That is why we play Reliquary Tower, which I am usually against. There are very, very few decks I would play this in, but this is one of them actually. So uh, we have a small combo to basically set up and in this deck and then we just go off. And the two cards we're looking to assemble on the field are one, Teferi's Ages inside. So that makes it so whenever we would draw a card, we draw two instead. So each card we cycle now draws two cards. And the other one is New Perspectives. When New Perspectives enters the battlefield, we draw three cards, which is a ton already, right? And then if we have seven or more cards in hand, we may pay zero. Basically, absolutely nothing for all of our cycling costs. So... Yeah, that is just pretty pretty amazing we do have a bunch of backup win conditions um in the form of dying to serve whenever we d discard one or more cards we create a two to tap zombie but this is only once each turn so in our turn the cycle once create a zombie and goes to their turn we cycle once create a zombie so we're <laughs> we're creating two twos at a reasonable pace uh, pace pace <laughs> yeah um and then we have Drake Haven, which does a similar thing, but we have to pay one, but this is not a once per turn effect, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then we also have Ominous Seas, and this is whenever we draw a card, we put a counter on Ominous Seas, and then we can remove eight counters to create an 8-8. Eight eight. And uh, yeah, that should kill the opponent pretty quickly, um, once we get a couple of counters on the card, obviously. Um, yeah, overall, there are a ton of cards here that are just here again for the ability to cycle for one mana. Um, like, and then we have a bunch of cards that cycle for two mana but have additional utility. For example, for Sect of Oddly is not an um, impressive magic card whatsoever, but it gives us a bit of interaction against artifact and enchantments. Same goes for Radiance Judgment. Just three mana, destroy a target creature with power four or greater. Not the greatest, but it has cycling too, and so on and so forth. We have a bunch of tutors to assemble our combo, and um, I think this is basically the gist of the deck. There is nothing too special going on here besides, you know, what I just explained. So let's jump into some games. If you enjoy my content, consider liking uh, in the video and subscribing to the channel, and uh, let's do this. We are ready to play against Toski, Barrow of Secrets. And, uh, ooh, Settle the Wreckage should be a nice tech card against their deck. Easy Prey is early interaction, but honestly, since we have double board wipe, I don't think I will actually cast it. Mnemonic Sphere is an interesting card in this deck, because it kind of has cycling, but it doesn't actually have cycling, which is important for something like New Perspectives. But this is still like a one mana discard draw effect, which is good enough, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm, I don't think we will interact with the opponent in any meaningful way, apart from the Joe War Disruption. So, um, I will just go ahead and play this as a land right now. And I think I could also just Play this. Yeah, I think I want to get the additional value here. And I'm going to pay two mana for that. <clears throat> okay. So the question is do I even want to let them draw a bunch of cards here? 
Um, or do I want to wipe the board next turn? Since they are going to drop Toski, I can't really do anything about them doing their thing here, right? But I might just want to wipe the board. I'm kind of tempted to settle them. So, hmm. Going to Shipwreck March and then Toulouse. They play Toski, draw four cards, which is a ton. And then I am going to very likely grab the board later. No, oh, settle the wreckage. I yeah, don't need you, Fateful Absence. I don't really need that right now. <clears throat> yeah. They're I'm going to draw four here, but I mean, that's fine. They no three because they don't attack with this, right? Do I cash this in? Um, so here's my if I hmm, if I settle the wreckage them right now, they're also getting a ton of mana and they can actually just castle the cards they get, which is kind of awkward. But I guess I let it go because this gives me a bit of time actually. Okay, um, yeah, we need to play this on white. There's no question about it. And then I can cycle these two before a Wrath of God, which is pretty good. <clears throat> pretty interesting. I think they're also going to attack with this 1 1, right? Yeah. So we're going to settle the wreckage them. They get five mana. Like they have so many cards, they have so much mana. Kind of problematic. I would have loved to use this settle the wreckage a bit later. Um but I think this is the spot for it. So now they're going to rebuild with the four mana they have. They probably just drop a bunch of one drops. Um I probably have to take this time off and cycle the Valiant Rescue and the Easy Prey. And then I'm probably going to cycle once more, um, at least with a Shark Typhoon. And then uh, Wrath of God, get four cards back with a Toulouse dying from the Wrath of God. Be good. Oh, Outland Liberator. Sure. Um. I think... Do I need more blue here? Probably not. And this is colorless cycling, which actually matters. And... This has land types in case I need them on the field. I think it's more likely that I need the land types on the field. Okay. Um... So the question is... Do I let them flip the Outland Liberator? Probably. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> They're going to drop Toski, obviously, on the board. Um, I also have the option of just letting them draw less cards here, obviously. Toski, yep. That happens. Rishka, ooh. Yep. Mm hmm They're going to swing in. I think I will have to crack this in response. So I draw my cards. Oh. Um Well now okay, this may is a, makes kind of a difference because now I can actually cast the Wrath of God off of the Rex Phyrexian Tower. I just get so much really don't want to like okay i can easy pray the frenzy i can kill the florahedron right like i can kill these two they only draw one card but if i do that i'm kind of losing out on value uh kind of and uh i think i will just let them draw the full three here
because this is just uh, this is such so uh, this is such value so much um anyways um yep okay they draw three that's fine i mean that's not really Let, let's be real it's not really <laughs> fine um okay do they drop something else yeah perfect oh um okay land I'm going to cycle you away at least three so i can cycle two more cards right oh that's a drake haven um cycle you and then play the bag of holding and then wrath the board and now I effectively have another to lose on the field with this bag of holding I'm going to discard two cards and I think it's going to be well, how do I want to contest them, right? That, that is the question. Do I just want to flood the board against them? I could do that with the Valiant Rescuer, with the Drake Haven. Um, I think the Faithful Absence is just not going to be good, straight up. Um, and then the Shark Typhoon is maybe a bit too slow as well. And it's only two mana cycling. I have a bunch of those. The Wish Claw Talisman. I, I really want to make my land drop, right? But um, I, I think Desert and Shark Typhoon. I'm going more likely to play the Desert between the two. Okay. And I still wish can wish Claw Talisman for uh, a board wipe, I believe. Yeah. But I'm kind of fearing what comes out of that. Oh wow. Um. I think. Yeah, this is actually the scariest thing they could have gotten here, because now they're refueling. Um, uh, a bit too slow, probably. What gets exiled? Oh no, this is not the exile one, this is... Oh, they, they animate their lands. Um... I think I have to just like go for a board wipe here, right? I don't have enough mana. I don't. Ah, this is unfortunate. Um, I can just potentially go with some. I need rescue alliance. We want to try that out. I could get another extra turn with the uh, Teferi's uh, protection, I think, but uh, that just doesn't seem that great. So yeah, cycle you. I'm intending to drop a hollow one here, by the way. That is my plan. Oh, that should actually be pretty threatening. Um. Maybe I'm supposed to keep the easy prey. Uh, boom. And then we drop the hollow one off of a... Yeah, play that. Play you hollow one. Um... And now I can block a couple of creatures. I can easy prey hopefully something hopefully. Um, and then I'm trying to stabilize with an Archfiend of Ifnir and hopefully draw a cycling card. But maybe I'm supposed do I do I live through this? Is the first question, right? Seven I kind of don't live through this. Rabbit bite. Yikes. There's only two or less. Yeah, that means that we're basically dead here, right? Let's see. Hmm. 
so that's seven I take from those. We're at one. We're dead. GG. We are ready to play against Falco Sparrow. Oh well, yeah. This is the best mono blue hand I've ever seen with this deck. Let's go. Just drawing blue is also fine because the commander can be cast with just triple blue if you need to. Get out of the way, adventure symbols. I want to show this off. Yeah, as you can see. And you have a bunch of colorless cycling costs, so that's pretty fine. We're going to not cycle this irrigated farmland, and I think I just want to make sure I hit these land drops because I have a bunch of expensive cards in my hand. Not sure what I'm going to do on turn two. And even if I draw a cycle reader, well, okay, I, I want to play this black source now. <laughs> but um, even if I drew a cycle there, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have cast it because I want to use it after the Teferi's Age is inside. Okay, um, yeah, I'm going to. I think just drop the Toulouse here. Um, oh. I think I want to play this Mox Amber now. I was going to hold it to not show it to them, right? Otherwise, if you don't hold it, you want to play it before your commander. But now that I've gotten the Swan Song, um, I want to play it. I know that they are likely just going to play their commander, right? Um, or not um, there, but uh, I, I just want to hold the Swan Song. So, uh, yeah, they hold up counter magic. So we play Aegis inside. They want to counter. It resolved! Yeah, but then now I can play my one mana cycler as well. Oh, this is amazing. I'm going to hold this cycling um, till the end of the turn. It's not sure what I want to. Like, if I want to swan song cycling, I haven't decided yet. So, let's be patient. Rabble rousing. How scary is that? Do I need to counter this? I feel like I really want to counter this. Because if they can't make a threatening board, I don't see them really pressuring me in the near future. This is way more manageable than a Rebel Rousing, honestly. Um, Yeah, this is a card that is good if Toulouse is not on the field, but it's not really great right now. Uh, I think I'd want to just do it, take it a bit slower um, and cycle this imposing Ventasaur away. Pay one for the Drake Haven and just grind it out a bit slower because I wasn't guaranteed to hit any cyclers here. Right? I obviously drew a bunch of cyclers. And this is also what I meant earlier. Um Mnemonic Sphere not having cycling is actually relevant for something like a No, not for Drake Haven. Uh, specifically uh, this is cycled or discarded. This is cycled or discarded the um new perspectives. Is the I think the only one where it's only relevant for that. Okay. Um I mean we lose two cards effectively, but it's honestly fine. I wanna make a land drop here. <sighs> no land drop, tough times. Uh I definitely want to play this and then I'm going to get rid of the mnemonics here. I just wanna hit my land drop. Yeah, perfect. I'll let you you and then this doesn't have for mana right now, and I'm going to wait through their turn. Maybe represent something for one mana, but m most importantly, if I cycle this, I draw two, and then I have to discard. And now, if I do this in their end step, I don't have to go to discard, which is pretty cool. I assume they're going to have a two mana or a three mana counter spell here, but um, that's fine. Uh. Yeah, uh, sure, you get flying. Oh, Dark Ritual, excellent draw here. Absolutely beautiful draw. And the Bag of Holding. Uh, let's see if we can resolve that, honestly. Or do we want to go with the Shadow of the Grave? I think we always use the mana from Dark Ritual in this turn, right? Um, And can I somehow set up a Time Warp Magic Mirror turn? Very likely not. Honestly, very likely not. Um, I'm going to play 
Alright, no need to play my land yet. Uh, the Shadow of the Grave and then... Shadow of the Grave, Time Warp... I'm I'm trying to decide here if I want to play this uh, Bag of Holding or if I want to utilize the Shadow of the Grave here. Or do I just want to actually flood the board with Drake Havens, right? Then my turn looks even more different. This only costs two, so it's only one less mana than the Bag of Holding. So I assume I'm just putting the Bag of Holding under this. Uh... Honestly, it can just be a land. And I definitely want to take my extra chain here, I think. So now, cycle you for white. Oh, there is a command tower. Cycle you away. Okay. Discard. Honestly, magic mirror. Not, don't need you, and I'm currently not putting cards in my graveyard, actually. So, solve the equation represents... I can solve for a tutor to get new perspectives. Um, I want to know what's in their hand. I, I want to know what I have to play around. Okay, okay, I have time. Um, yeah, this, this is great for me. So, I want to... Not use my tutor yet. I don't need this memory leak. Don't need a frost veil ambush either. I think oh there is a counter spell. That's great. I wanna I think I wanna shuffle now. Um don't need I wanna have a bit of blue here. And uh solve the equation? For a new purse for an idyllic tutor, then idyllic tutor searching for new perspectives, and then we just pass the turn. I think I've spent one mana too much on cycling. Um, because now I don't actually hold up counter spell, but it should be fine. I think it should be fine. Um, because I have a blocker that I am actually going to use for blocking. Um, they can play a couple of cards off the top of the library, so we have to be careful with that. Oh, top. I don't like that. Um, but I do get to resolve this new perspectives very likely, since I have the counter spell for backup. I've used my Dark Ritual Mox Amber, though, already. So, yeah. Shulai is obviously just... Not going to be a problem. Luminous Brood Moth. Let's see. Flip to lose. And I'm going to block with this to lose 1000% of the time because that just puts all these sweet, sweet cyclers back into my hand. They don't attack. Haha. <laughs> Interesting. I like it. This gives me the opportunity to cycle into a board wipe though. And I want to hold off on my land drop in case I get a Reliquary Tower. <clears throat> okay. Okay, let's start this party, shall we? I have Counter Spell Backup, I have Counter Spell Backup. Beautiful. Okay. Um, and let's... Anyways, I started cycling. Uh, so this... We start... You have cycling for zero. And now the hand is going to become a pretty, pretty crowded, honestly. And it's a bit annoying. Honestly. Yep. Um... No, there is a Relic word, all right. I think I want to drop that. For sure. And then... If I can help it, I think I'm going to dig for a Teferi's Protection. I believe I haven't cut the Teferi's Protection, right? Wait, let me let me check my list. Uh, yeah, anyways, let's continue cycling. Neutralize, don't need you. How many more cards in the deck? It's going to be close, honestly. Um... 
Maybe I shouldn't play this because now I. Yep. Play. Oh, the Zero of Tumbling Sands untaps. I always forget that. That's also kind of another ritual. Yeah. So now I actually have lethal because what's going to happen I'm, is I'm going to cycle. I have four mana and two of these I can use to put a bunch of cards in my hand again with the... I don't even know where it is. I have a two mana card that can, yeah. Shadow of the Grave, which you can't see it this way. Shadow of the Grave. So I'm going to use two mana to return everything I've cycled, draw more cards, and I'm eventually going to find the Thassax Oracle this way. Um, no, I don't want to cycle that yet. That's going to ask me every time if I want to do cool stuff. Okay. So now cycle you. Uh... Yep, cycle you. And the annoying part about this is, like, actually just how crowded the hand gets for, like, the interface here is not great for specifically things like this. Yep, cycle you. Yep. Cycle you. Yep. Cycle you. Like, I think we're already getting there without the Shallow Graves. Yeah, I, oh, I do have Teferi's Protection in the deck, okay. I uh, I was pretty sure that I had it, but... Um, there is the Oracle. So now... Uh, do I have any more cycling here? Yeah, there's more cycling here. Beautiful. Um, I have an odd amount of cards in my deck, but that shouldn't matter right now. It kind of matters if the only blue card you have on the field for some reason is the Oracle, and then they kill it in response, and now you have one card left in response to the trigger, you don't have any devotion, so you actually don't win instantly. Uh, sorry guys, uh, th I'm just trying to around here. I think this is all the cards. So now Shadow Graves puts all those cards back into my hand. Um, there we go. Starting development five. Uh, three. I can actually get one more mana here with the Vizier of Tumbling Sands as well. Yeah, that's pretty great. One, and then we're going to use the Thassus Oracle because we've just drawn our whole deck. GG. Uh, yep, submit zero. There we go. Good game. We are done with the games. I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And yeah, to lose Clever Conductor, it's a... Honestly, let's be real, it's a pretty meme deck. Um, like, you, you take a ton of time to execute your combo. Um, like, to actually do it, which is, you know... Not that bad in and of itself, but you also take a bit too much time to set up and you need a critical mass of cycling cards in your deck and yada 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 so and so forth, right? So um, overall, the deck is pretty fun though. Um, just again, full disclosure, usually the decks I play on this channel, like my personal overall win rate since Campana released on like 300, 400 games is 78, 79%. And that's only not at 80% because I've played this deck and I have like a 38% win rate with it. So just full disclosure there. <laughs> um, but it is, it is pretty fun if it goes off, not gonna lie. Um, so... If you want to play this deck on a budget, however, um, like I first of all was again, don't craft this if you want to win. Uh, let's uh, look what can, <laughs> what you can cut and what do you actually need. So um, specifically, this deck is again pretty expensive. On the mana base luckily uh, the a few really important lands like reliquary tower lonely sandbar and like the cycling lands those are not rare but there are also some rare cycling lands and you do need those so um for example rafine's tower obviously great mana fixer and you also have like fetid pools you really want those and basically anything in the rare section you kind of want because there is just no unnecessary land in here 
Phrenexian Tower especially can give you uh, one mana uh, at crucial times, as you saw. Like, I've lost the first game, right? But this still was useful. And it allows you to sacrifice to lose um, if you need it, and you still have your land drop. So, like, you really want to hold off on your land drop usually in this deck. And then, okay, do I want to play Reliquary? Do I want to play a Phyrex Phyrexian Tower? Um, so, yeah. Uh, you, you basically want all of these... Um, you can make some cuts, um, but uh, every tap mana and tap mana you play means that you're not spending that mana on cycling, which is pretty important. Um, for the actual cards in the deck, you obviously need Teferi's Ages Insight, you need new perspectives, you need um, the tutors probably, and you need the Oracle. That is your main win condition in this deck. Then you have some cycling cards that are just good, but can be replaced, you know, with just any generic cycling cards. Banalish Partisan, we didn't see the power of this card right now, but this allows you to stay alive against aggressive decks you bring it back um then like in, in in the end of their turn then you untap now you have a blocker or an attacker um and that is just going to be pretty annoying and it's kind of uncounterable unless this gets exiled it's really a nightmare to deal with and you can also just single-handedly win games against control with this thing so i think it's pretty cool but um basically everything here um, and there are not many things, right? But everything here that has cycling, you can just replace with any other cycler. But you're obviously going to lose a bit of utility, which is fine, honestly. You want the cheap interaction. There is not much interaction you play, but you do want the kind of interaction that we have. Like, Thought Seasons Inquisition, um, just keep the coast clear for counter spells like swan songs mana tithes um that, mana tithes specifically is an a uh, card that you want to use uh, like just to relieve early the pressure and just buy you a couple of turns um yeah um so basically you want the cheap interaction um also, one more thing is that this deck, if you already have a collection with a bunch of staples, this check actually shouldn't be too expensive. Um, yeah, uh, going on, we want the Tutor, Scrim Tutor, Wish Claw Talisman, and Idyllic Tutor are pretty important to actually get to your Teferi's Edges Insight and News Perspectives, right? Um, and then you want a bunch of board wipes. Uh, I've chose Settle the Wreckage because it's instant speed and you're going to naturally hold up a lot of mana and then you can just cycle everything at their end step. Um, so I, I thought Settle the Wreckage was a good fit for that kind of um, playstyle. Um, but again, you just I think three board wipes is where you want to be because you like cycling so much. You can get tutors, so you can have your board wipes at critical points to stay alive. But um, honestly, three board wipes, any three will do. Um, and Teferi's Protection is kind of like an extra turn, um, in a way. Uh, time Warp as well, it just basically is a fog that, you know, helps you stay alive for one turn, then they overcome it to the board, then you board wipe, things like that. Dying to Serve and Drakehaven, if you want to craft one of them, I think Dying to Serve is a bit better. But uh, both... Like, I, I, I'm actually considering maybe cutting the Drakehaven because it's so mana intensive, but Dying to Serve is just not and can just help you stay alive um, for free, in, in quotation marks. And honestly, that is basically the deck. Um, yeah, the deck is pretty fun if it goes off. It doesn't go off all that often, at least from what I've found. But um, I didn't find a way to make a better plan with this like specifically i wanted to make a cycling deck with Toulouse, and i wanted to just go for ages inside thassa's oracle and new perspectives but um yeah this is <laughs> what we're working with this is s for cycling in a circle hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next video